Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my latest weekly reading vlog. Dane reads. I am currently reading The Plague by Albert Camus. I have about 40 pages left to go. It's currently on track for a 4 out of 5, maybe 4.5 out of 5, we will see. Uh, after that, I'm going to read White Shroud, which is some Allen Ginsberg poetry, and then I'm probably going to read The Lady of the Lake by Andrei Sapkowski. It is currently Sunday the 7th of March 2021. Uh, it's currently about 11.15pm, and I'm off to do some other filming. So yeah. Hello everybody! I still have spots on my face here, here, and here in a little triangle. Uh, my face is the Deathly Hallows. Uh, it is currently, what, 9th of March? Tuesday the 9th of March. Uh, so my radio show is going out in a little bit, that's featuring Lasana Shabazz, um, which is very cool. He's doing a, um, like a resident ship here, at, uh, residency rather, here at, uh, in High Wycombe at Books Libraries, which is very cool. Um, I actually submitted a piece to it as well, he's trying to get stories from different Wycombe residents and stuff. So uh, yeah, that's going out later. Um, YouTube news, I have like scheduled my videos now, so they're gonna come out at 6 p.m. every day. Uh, and I've got at least 10 to 12 days-ish scheduled. Hopefully gonna keep that going. Um, yeah, so it's like random bookish video or whatever, then review. Review every other day, basically. And then I just fill in the gaps, you know? So all of that is happening. I'm still reading The Lady of the Lake, I think that's what it's called, by Andrzej Sapkowski, uh, Witcher book number five. It's very good. Um, it's kind of partly bits of it are set in our world. The thing that Sapkowski does, which is really cool, is that in his stories, he uses like framing devices. So he quite often has a story within a story. And that's very much happening here. And it's cool that the story within the story is in our world, I guess. So, yeah, I went to the shop earlier for a little walk, not a huge one. Um, I feel like I had something I was going to tell you guys, and I can't remember what it is, so it can't have been that important. Uh, I've been making progress, anyway, on Scarlet Sins, which is my new book coming out soon. There is a, a cover reveal, etc., coming soon for that. And, uh, yeah, just being busy, I've been editing the Lexicologist Handbook as well, which is another one of my books. I'm hopefully, possibly, anyway, might have four books out this year, one per quarter. So my first one's a little late, I guess, because it's going to be April. So then probably another one at the end of June, another one start of September, another one end of November, maybe. Because I've got Scarlet Sins, Stories and Songs, that's coming very soon. The Lexicologist Handbook, I literally just need to read back through it and then that's ready to go to print. Uh, so that's been through editing. Uh, I've got a poetry collection which I'll probably run past my editor just for a single pass for her to make sure it's all consistent and stuff but as it's poetry it doesn't really need editing and that would just leave me one more book to get out by the end of the year which is very doable so we'll see mm. uh, yeah and I'm gonna go and do some filming now I guess Hello, it is 6.55pm on Wednesday the 10th of March. Uh, I slept for 16 hours yesterday. Well, I was actually in bed for longer, for about 20. I went to bed at 8pm and got up at about 4. Uh, I guess, like, my anxiety sort of calmed down a bit. Although it was bad yesterday, which is why I went to bed early. Uh, and then today I'm just a bit down, a bit glum, but uh, I'm watching Old World Gamer play, he's finished completing Castle of the Winds 1, so now he's doing Castle of the Winds 2, which are these two really awesome, like, um, basically like Dungeons and Dragons style dungeon crawler games, but from about 1993. Um, and they were kind of ahead of their time in their way, in a way, I mean the graphics are pretty terrible, but you know, it's making me nostalgic. So I'm watching that, and I'm currently about two-thirds of the way through The Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski. After that, I'm going to read uh, A Maze of Death by Philip K. Dick. So that should be good. Um, I'm currently mostly just working now at chipping away my TBR again. I had, um, had a few books come recently, and I think once I've finished reading this Witcher book, that's the last of the new books read. So then I'm back to like chipping away at my TBR. So I'm on about 95 owned but unread books at the moment. And I'd like to get it down to about 30, but we'll see. Because I think it's actually breaks into like 40 regular books and then like 50 bedtime books, which are ones that I'll just read a bit at a time in bed. So for example, my current bedtime book is um, uh, The Discworld Companion by Terry Pratchett. And I want to say Stephen Briggs. Uh, but it's basically a Discworld dictionary, so it's interesting, but it is also reading a dictionary, you know? So I only, I don't want to have that as my main book. 
So what I need to start doing is thinking about moving books through from my bedtime pile into my daytime pile. So we'll see how it goes because I've got my French books as well. Uh, and I've only got, I've got like La Hobbit about 70 pages to finish off and then two Asterix graphic novels. And then after that, I don't have any French to read, so then all of my time, because basically when Susie comes around, I read my French books. When she's not here, I read my English books and uh, do my Duolingo at the same time. So we'll see. Once I run, read, run out of the French books, I should theoretically start to read through my unread pile in there a lot quicker as well. It all kind of depends. Uh, my own book news, my book Scarlet Sins, which is going to be a cover reveal, an announcement of soon if it hasn't been out already. Uh, that's all of the files for that finalised now, so in fact the uh, e-copy is available for pre-order. Uh, the physical copy, I've, I'm just waiting, so I've set it all up and it says there are no problems. So they then send you a link to where you can purchase like your proof copy, so I'm waiting for that email to come through with that link so I can purchase my proof copy and get that checked, so that's all good. Uh, and I'm editing another project called the Lexicologist Handbook, so that's what I'm, I'm working on, an actual work work as well. Uh, in particular, the Art Centre and some ghostwriting. Those are like my two main clients at the moment, and I'm behind on both of them because I've been asleep all day, so yeah. Oh, and this weekend on Saturday, there is gonna be a writer's workshop with Emma Rosen Books here from uh, Booktube as well, so I'm very excited about that, should be good. All right, see you soon. Hello everybody, it is your boy Dane. Uh, welcome to my latest weekly reading vlog. I'm currently reading, oh, this bad boy, which is The Santa Roga Barber by Frank Herbert, the author of June. It's very psychedelic looking cover. Look at that, there we go. Um, and this is basically like, this guy is sent into this like weird, isolated little small town in America to investigate some weird goings on and it just gets weirder and weirder. But there's this like, pervasive like claustrophobia to it and this feeling of paranoia like everybody there seems to know him and they're all like aware who he is and they're all watching him and just lots of weird stuff is going on so um it's pretty good actually I, it started slowly but i'm coming up to halfway through now and i'm pretty engrossed don't you also look glamorous you look glamorous and very sexy <laughs> oh thank you yeah i'm like reading in style yeah and we've got the record player on and through here, dinner is almost ready. We have some crispy kale. Always gotta have some crispy kale. Kettle's currently boiling. Well, that's going mad. Sorry, epileptics. Uh, that's gonna become some gravy. Over here, we have some asparagus. I'm just heating this up. That's almost ready now. And then in here, I've made a pie. Look at my pie. And we're doing some fries. So I'm gonna go and have a go at that. All right, the pie. It's out of the oven. I still have to try and get it out of the pan, but look at that. And then here are the fries. And then there is the uh, asparagus. And for some reason my heat has just kicked in as though it's not hot enough in here already. Do you even need to flip it? I'd like to flip it, because I did the design on the other side. Oh, true. Oh, that's, that's looking good though. I okay, show the wall my pie. Oh, that is massive. Give you reference, that's my hand. That's the pie. Right, gotta take a few photos of it. Gotta lay it down on top of that. My pie! Oh, I'm so good at pie. <laughs> 3.14159265358979323846264338327950288841. Bjorch! Being pirates. Satisfying that. Okay, a wedge like that for you, yeah? Oh my god, okay. Yeah? I'm gonna leave Pac Man pie. Right, okay. Now, how do I transfer this without dying? <laughs> sort of like. Knife underneath. Oh, that worked so well! It wasn't quite the angle I was going for, I'm not going to lie, but... Oh, but that... That's, the, that's the money shot, that. Yeah, I need some photos. Proud of yourself? Yeah. Well, I don't know, I haven't eaten it yet, have I? <laughs> <laughs> You're happy, Susie? Very happy. I can't wait to eat this. Tuck on in. Alright, so we've got what we got on. Dance Macabre by Camille Sansen. 
I think yeah. that's how you say it. That's close enough, yeah. And uh, what is this gorgeousness, babe? This is Sunday dinner. Uh, Alex from the Bookish Report said he wanted to see more food, so here you go. More this is, food. This is the the Sunday dinner we have. Uh, crispy kale, sage and onion stuffing balls, some vegetables. Uh, this is like a vegan uh, barbecue roasty thing and some roast tatties. Yeah. Oh, zoom in close. I'll do the Marks and Spencers, right? This isn't just vegan food. This is vegan food. This is Dane's vegan food. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey Biggie, are you enjoying your little den? Looks nice there, doesn't it? Yeah. Hello everybody, it is eight o'clock in the morning on Monday the 15th of March. Biggie is currently investigating the tripod, so if it if it wobbles, that's why. Are you, are you gonna come and say hello? Mm. You know, somebody doesn't wanna be up, picked up at all, do ya? Sorry, buddy, all right then. He just wants to nuzzle the stand, apparently. Um, I finished reading, uh, what was it called? The Saratoga Barrier by Frank Herbert. Actually quite good. Um, I, I'd probably give that one a, a low four out of five, I think I'm gonna give that one. Piggy! Um, but yes, it was enjoyable. Uh, I'm now reading The Other Side of the Sky by Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, this is short stories of his. And they're fantastic so far, lots to think about. My favourite one has surprised me because it was written in first person and I don't tend to enjoy first person, but it was basically like this old spacer dude um, sharing some of the adventures that he'd had and it kind of made it feel as though uh, it was just a mate in a pub chatting to you, you know? Biggie, what are you doing? Also, what is that? That's from the curtain, I guess. That's the natural light. So that is where I'm at. Should we let you outside, Biggie? Um, I've I've already been for my walk as well, and I've had breakfast. Uh, obviously, as you can tell by the fact that I'm awake at this point, I haven't been to bed. Um, I have a call at 11 and then another one at 1. So, I'm probably just going to stay awake now. I mean, that's only three hours, and then I should be done in six hours. Then I can get some sleep. <laughs> Hello, folks. Just a little courtesy check-in, really. I have pretty much uh, finished reading that Arthur C. Clarke book. I've already forgotten what it's called. It had the sky in it somewhere, I think. The other side of the sky? Yeah, the other side of the sky. See, I do pay attention. Uh, I'm just pretty much finishing off the last story in that now, and then I'm going to move on to Gotta Get Through This by Louis Theroux. Uh, I had this on my, on, my, on my pile for a while now. Uh, basically, once I've finished this one, which will be today soon, uh, that puts me on 89 currently reading, and so to celebrate, I thought I'd pick up one that I've been looking forward to. Because a lot of the stuff that's left on my TBR now, like, I mean, for example, there's the entire Dune series, that's going to take a while. And like loads of stuff like the collected letters of Allen Ginsberg and stuff, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a bit like pulling teeth soon. But hey-ho, we're getting, we're getting somewhere. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Hello, it is currently half seven in the evening on, what day are we on? Thursday the 18th of March. Uh, man, life's hectic. Uh, anxiety's still up and down a little bit. I, I've been doing a lot of small video calls though, which are traditionally one of my nemesis. Uh, I've also been writing a book about an, on anxiety. Do you guys want a writing update from me? Because I've um, done one for my website because there's so much stuff I've been working on recently like in edits, rewrites, first drafts, planning, all of this stuff. Uh, too much for me to really go into in one video. So maybe I could do a writing update. Let me know in the comments. Basically if more than one, per well if at least one person asked me to do that, I guess I will. And I'll be an author tuber for a day. Um, what else is new? Uh, yeah, anxiety. I had a chat with Healthy Minds, which is like the local uh, mental health like service, basically. Um, so I did do something on a program called Silver Cloud, which is like an online therapy thing that they provide, uh, tailored specifically towards health anxiety as well, which is what I tend to get. Um, so that went okay, but I'm still scoring very highly on all the tests. Uh, actually, I've been getting higher scores, and high is bad. I've been getting higher scores than when I started the course, uh, which doesn't surprise me because I've been either having a panic attack every day or like feeling one coming on and being able to shake it off or whatever uh, every day. So anyway, I'm, I'm now on a waiting list for like one-on-one -on -one phone um, CBT, cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, but they, they said that's gonna be months rather than weeks. 
Um, so I've spoken to my doctor and they're gonna give me beta blockers again because that helps me to deal with like the physical symptoms when I'm getting the shakes and rapid heartbeat and stuff. Um, so they prescribed me propanol, propanol, what I, which is what I was used to be on. Um, and then I went to collect it from the pharmacy today and they say basically it's not gonna be in stock until at least the end of next week uh, because of Brexit, basically, because we left the European Union like idiots. <laughs> and now medication can't come into our country, so great. Uh, anyway, other than that, Susie came over yesterday, we watched two thirds of A Knight's Tale and I made vegan burgers and then we had a pretty early night because I've been shattered, like every day, so tired. Although I have been waking up at respectable times and going to bed at respectable times, like I think I've been getting up between 5 and 8 a.m. and going to bed around 9ish and then reading for like an hour. So I've almost finished off reading actually The Discworld Companion by Terry Pratchett which is my current like English bedtime book and then as my French language bedtime book I'm reading uh, La Serpe d'Or by uh, Giuseni and Yu Ederzo uh, which is one of the Asterix graphic novels, it's the second one so I'm reading that in French and then I have uh, Asterix et Ligoth uh, which is the third one so I will be picking that one up afterwards. Yeah. I'm quite enjoying them because I finished reading The Hobbit, you see, so yeah. Um, and then after that I will just be, I think my next main bedtime book might be How Not To Die by, I think it's by Dr. Michael Greger and it's um, vegan propaganda basically. Uh, it goes into the China study which is this big thing which basically found the plant-based diets are the optimal diets, the only diets proven to reverse heart disease fam. But although that is plant-based as opposed to vegan, and I'm vegan, so I still eat a lot. Like, you know, like, you're not going to be healthy by eating loads of vegan ice cream. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm currently, I'm currently, so I finished reading Gotta Get Through This by Louis Three, full review coming soon, but I gave it a pretty, pretty weak four out of five, but still a four out of five. Um, I mean, it helps that I've seen pretty much all of Louis Three's shows, I think, so I, like, knew what he was writing about. And then I'm currently reading Eye in the Sky by Philip K. Dick and this is, I'm about halfway through and this is on par for like a 3.5 out of 5. Um, I've read a lot of books like this recently that are like sci-fi with like heavy religion thrown in. Uh, let me read you the blurb, I think the blurb's the best, I can't really describe what's happening. Like Philip K. Dick I think is because he's such an ideas man, sometimes his plots sort of, you know, they jump around a bit basically and so yeah anyway. As Jack Hamilton ascended higher into the stratosphere, he could see the great ball of earth spread beneath him, and it was standing still. Around it, in an orbit, swung a tiny mass of glowing matter, the sun. It was the ancient geocentric universe come true, a universe with earth at dead centre and all other celestial bodies subservient to it. As he rose still higher, he found that he was peering into a gigantic lake, a lake roomy enough to hold all earth without a ripple. And then, with a shocked gasp, Jack realised that it wasn't a lake at all. He was peering into a colossal eye, an eye in the sky. He was trapped in someone else's personal world, as someone who seemed not very sane. A world of fundamental religion, ruled over by a crude version of an Old Testament God, where the sinners were miserable and the righteous intolerant and intolerable. A bit like our world. Hello, it is Friday the 19th of March, 6.35pm. Um, I did wake up at a normal time, so that's all been going well. But then um, I fell back asleep for like three hours because I've been exhausted all week. So I don't know, maybe I'll be up late uh, tonight, we'll see. I've nearly finished my bedtime book, um, the, the, the Discord Companion by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Briggs. Um, basically it's like, a, um, it's like a dictionary or a reference book for the, for the Discworld. But because of that, like, it just gets a bit dull sometimes. So I think I'm up to the letter V now. So I've just got to read all the entries from V to Z. And then there is some like, um, afterwards and stuff, but I'm just gonna switch it out as my main book. Uh, feeling a little bit anxious actually. I didn't realize this until I stood up. I think it's cause it's hot. I'm gonna open the door, get some air in. Uh, I finished, uh, I finished reading Gotta Get Through This by Louis Theroux. I think I already talked about that. Uh, also finished reading Eye in the Sky by Philip K. Dick. Um, so three was a four out of five, this was a 3.5 out of five, it was all right. Um, it's, uh, I think I said, so I'm not gonna go on about it too much, but it was too heavy on the religious themes after I've already read quite a lot of religious sci-fi recently. Uh, and now I'm reading The Honorary Consul by Graham Greene. So Graham Greene is one of my favorite authors, and um, basically one of the things he does really well is this sort of almost farce, like political farce, I guess, 
So uh, this is set, um, where are we actually? Du -du 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 -du. An Argentinian town, that's right. Um, and he says in the introduction that it's not like any specific town because he didn't want to get tied down by geography. So we're just in this Argentinian town. And basically this gang, um, like politically motivated gang, tried to kidnap someone and they, cut, they kidnapped the wrong person. They accidentally kidnapped the honorary consul. It's basically told through um, a guy called Dr. Eduardo Pla, um, who... Pla? I thought it was PR. Okay, anyway. Um, and this, this guy, like, he knows the consul and then he gets brought in to, like, check on him, basically, once he's been kidnapped. And then it's like, you know, this case of, oh, we know each other, now can they let him live, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so, so far I'm about 50 pages in and it's kind of taken us back to before this kidnapping to when he first met the consul. Uh, Graham Greene, fantastic writer. I'm looking forward to finishing this one. Oh, yeah? Hello everybody, all oh, let's duck so you can see my ears. It is uh, Saturday the 20th of March, it is 4.02pm. I'm still reading The Honorary Consul by Graham Greene, but I'm very close to the end now. Uh, when I finish this, I'm either going to pick up a Shakespeare, which I might do, just to tick one off, because I've got quite a few to go through. Or I also have Galapagos by uh, Kurt Vonnegut over there. I'm about 25 pages off the end of the definitions in um, the Discord Companion. Annoyingly, last night I read for like 20 minutes and it was just an entry for Unseen University. So there was a lot there, but hey ho. Um, I'm off to the art center later on to, uh, the, we're doing light it in red, so we're lighting up the building in red, and I'm gonna take some photos, I'll try and take some vlog. Uh, and also, so uh, for my Q&A video, Alex from the Bookish Report asked if you're ever gonna see any cooking in my vlogs again. I've literally just got these out of the oven. Uh, I've made some, what are these, cinnamon swirls. So I've got a bit of icing to put on the top. Hello everybody, Dane here. It is currently Sunday, uh, what time is it? 35 past eight on uh, Sunday the 21st of March. Went to the art center for the light it in red thing yesterday, which was good. Um, and yeah, I took a little bit of footage, but I don't know how that turned out. Uh, I filmed, cause Susie came over after that, and uh, I filmed with her today. We were gonna do our channel trailer for our channel, Lord Literature and Madam Media, which I'll link to below. Um, and basically the flash stick, because of the system that I've got, for whatever reason, my Mac doesn't recognize my camera. So I have to plug my camera into my computer move stuff onto a flash stick and then copy it over and it turns out my flash stick is kaput so I moved the footage onto it and then it got corrupt and I didn't have a backup so oops so we're gonna have to redo that uh, I did read some books in bed last night because when Susie comes over I tend to read my French books so I finished reading last night Le Serp d'Or and Asterix L.A. Goth uh, both by R. Gossini and A. Uder. so uh, these are Asterix books two and three both in French so that was fun um, my French is really coming along now actually I'm also currently watching a documentary in French and like there's some really cool stuff so this is like the Paris of Gossini and Edette, so and there's like a lot of information about behind the scenes stuff which I didn't realize um, and like you pointed out for example that Edifix the dog was in one of the panels of this even though he doesn't come into the, the graphic novels as a character till book five so uh, yeah both of these were strong four out of fives and now I'm just reading Galapagos by Kurt Vonnegut. I'm very near the end. I've got about 50 pages to go, so I should finish it tonight. This is on par for a strong 3.5 out of 5. Satire. Um, basically, this civilization from a million years in the future is looking to back a big brained society from today. And every time they go on about big brained, it makes me think of the big brain meme. Uh, which I might, I might try and edit here. I don't know if... I'll see if I can figure out how to do it. Uh, yeah, so that is where we're at. I'm probably gonna love you and leave you now. Uh, a few other updates. So uh, we had uh, Sunday lunch earlier today, which I took some footage of, because uh, Alex from the Bookish Report requested more food footage. Uh, and we listened to a bunch of vinyls as well, so I'm gonna go and list those and stuff on eBay soon. And other than that, I'm just cracking on, being productive, working on the Wickham Art Centre website. Uh, but we're getting there. So, there we have it. That is this week's reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot.